Good evening and welcome to the Rockland School Committee meeting of Monday, January 25th. Um, we will start with the acceptance of the minutes for the meeting of January 11th, 2021. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? I'm gonna roll call vote, Mr. Riggins. Aye. Mrs. Hennessy. Aye. And myself, um, that's three of us. We'll move on to nothing under communications with this. Then next is superintendent's report with Dr. Cron, please. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, today we had a professional development day and it was building based, it was teacher driven and it was, uh, we dedicated this day to the teacher's request to have additional time to address cohort C. Uh, cohort C uh, is just a, a way to describe those kids who are uh, quarantined and putting together work for this extra cohort has become sort of a challenge for our teachers. So they use some time to, to work on those plans. They also did some work today to align remote and in-person curriculum and to plan lessons collaboratively. So it gave teachers some time to work together. Some additional work completed today. The elementary did some RAS Kids training. It's a web-based program that gives students to access the more than 400 eBooks. They can listen to them, read them, and even record themselves reading. They can listen to the books for model fluency and uh, read the books for practice, then record themselves so that teachers can monitor their progress. Every leveled ebook has an e-quiz to test their comprehension, and books include Spanish songs, nursery rhymes, poetry, and more. Just going to click over since we have the option of doing it, just to show you uh, this this program. So again, this is Raz Kids, and it gives our kids a chance to to read. It's 24/7, so they can read any time of day or night, and um, it's an excellent tool. Uh, the middle school conducted a power standards review by subject and did some planning for next year. And the high school uh, worked on the program of studies for next year as well. Uh, next, I just wanna make an announcement, some announcements about kindergarten registration. There'll be no registration night this year. Uh, registration will take place from February 1st through March 5th. Registration packets are being mailed this week. Um, to be eligible for kindergarten this year. Just a reminder, your child must be five years old by August 31st of this year. After the packet is completed, including all required documents, you should then please contact your school secretary and set up a time to bring in your packet and documents. The listing of school assignments by street is included in your packets as well as the phone number for your school. The registration packet can also be obtained through our webpage. Just a budget update. Last week, Governor Baker announced that the state plans to fully fund the Student Opportunities Act. We hope to have preliminary cherry sheets as early as Wednesday next week. We will be meeting with the town this week to begin the process of reviewing the numbers. But this is very good news for us. Um, we are a major recipient of Student Opportunities Act money in Rockland. Um, so this is a very, very, this is very good news for us. I want to just say thank you to a few people. I want to say thank you to our department heads for their monthly reports. Um, they're especially impressive because of COVID, in my opinion. Um, really enjoyed reading them, and I want to thank them for all the time that they spent putting those together for all of us. I'd also like to send a special thank you again to the technology department, Tim Wells and his staff have closed 756 out of 759 trouble tickets received from staff, students, and families. They have uh, been an excellent ongoing support system for our one-to-one -one Chromebook program, and we thank them. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that we did a re, uh, an update to our website. It's um, incredibly cool looking. I'm just gonna go there right now to show you. Um, it streams, you know, different things at the very top. So depending on when you when you log in, but it's a little different look, 
when you put your mouse over the top, you get some updates and some news. So it's a new and updated look and um, we're very happy with it. And I just want to remind people that we have an excellent website and we hope that they'll use it and go to it often. Um, and since I'm still clicking and nothing else is coming up, that's the end of my superintendent's report. So I will stop sharing my screen. And I don't know if there are any questions or comments about any of that. That was a lot of information. I have nothing. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? No, ma'am. Jamie? No questions. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to nothing under audience. So we'll get to the reports. We have financial reports for November and December for the school department, the high school activities, I'm sorry, the high school student activities, middle school student activities in the daycare. Or motions to accept. Four seconds. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor would just be the three of us since you're motioning in <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye. Mr. Biggins, do you have an aye? I do. Thank you. I, I do. We'll, move, <laughs> we'll move on to monthly reports for November and December. We have Art, Mrs. Thomas. I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. We have the athletic department through Mr. Graziano, computer technology, Mr. Wells, daycare, Mrs. Tate. Dean, Mr. Damon, English 9 through 12, Ms. Donovan, Health and Physical Education, Mrs. Folsom, Math 9 through 12, Mr. Casagrande, Music, Mr. Piazza, Radio and TV Station is Mr. Cable Murphy, Science is Mrs. Armstrong, Social Studies, Mr. McAllister, Special Education 9 through 12, Mrs. McGonigal. The middle school is Mrs. Schiffer, and Mr. Griffin, and Foreign Language is Mrs. Shaughnessy, and the library is Mrs. Kemp. Um, I enjoyed these as well, Dr. Cron, reading them um, and seeing all that are going on in the schools. Even though there's COVID, there's still so many things going on. I was definitely impressed. Do we have any other comments or questions? No, ma'am. And it looks like Jamie's stuck. Emily is here, I'm hearing. Emily is, yep, Emily is on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I texted you. <laughs> no no uh, comments on me no uh, comments. as well. I think Dr. Cron already said it and you've said it, but it's so exciting to read everything that's happening uh, throughout all of the different departments. Kudos to the leads for putting those reports together and for all the teachers and staff. Thank you. Welcome, Mrs. Davidson. Do we have, do you have? I'm assuming we just went over the monthly reports and I apologize for being late. Um, my only question, I don't know if it was already covered, but the computer technology, um, can the equipment that was just purchased or soon to be purchased be reused in the new elementary school? Sure, we can, we'll, we'll use any newer equipment we'll keep with the new school. Um, but again, we, we will take every opportunity to purchase equipment given our percentage of um, state involvement in funding. So we basically be buying equipment for, you know, 40 cents on the dollar. So um, it's a good time to buy new equipment and to upgrade. But yes, in very long answer to your question, we will keep uh, the equipment that's okay. new. Thank you. No, that was all I have. Great, thank you. Okay, then we'll move on to Curriculum Corner with Memorial Park, Class Dojo um, with Victoria and first grade teachers, Mrs. Sheehan. Thank you, Jill. So um, Class Dojo was an app that I brought to the teachers about six years ago, about the time when um, Ms. Dinger's students were born. <laughs> and this app has actually evolved and has um, included so many additional features. It was just a win-win for us um, moving forward. So in June of 2019, as a staff, we decided we were going to adopt this app and use it school-wide to communicate with our families. Our families would have one platform 
to receive information, exchange information with two-way communication. And um, we had no idea that during the, the school closure that it was going to be such a universal tool for us to communicate and to stay connected with one another, um, that it was amazing, absolutely amazing from March until June. So in the summer, um, I met with Mrs. Lizzie and the other two elementary principals and really shared this with them and all of its features and explained to them that students were uploading um, to their portfolios, um, their student work during the school closure. And it was just unbelievable how this tool evolved and helped us um, share information. So now all three elementary schools are using this um, Class Dojo app. And one of our new teachers, um, I asked her if she would explain it to you because given that she's new and she came on board, she has embraced this tool and her students know how to use it. Um, so that's how easy this tool is to adapt and to move, but it also is such a great communication tool. So we're gonna turn it over to Tori Dinger. She is one of our new first grade teachers. And then she has two of her students that she'll introduce as well. So hi everyone, I'm Victoria Dinger. Um, I'm excited to be here today to give you a little snippet of what Class Dojo is like from the teacher and student perspective. So I'm going to try to share my screen here. Let's see, it's bigger and I think I should have it up. Okay, so Class Dojo. Um, so depending on your role, you will have a slightly different setup and view for Class Dojo. Um, so this also goes for if you choose to sign in, you, you know, using a laptop or your cell phone. Um, so here's what I see as a teacher signing in from my laptop. Um, my classroom is over on the far left. And then over on the right, I have access to the school wide dojo, um, which is run by Principal Sheehan. Um, and this is where she will put um, school wide news and updates for both teachers and for parents. So here is my classroom. Um, each kiddo has a character, um, which they love, because um, that's really fun for them. They get to create it and it's engaging for them. Um, at the top, you can see I'm connected to all 17 of my students and 20 parents. Um, and Dojo is actually pretty amazing at helping you get them connected. Um, they have these printouts that, um, well, you can print them out or you can send them by v um, email and it gives you step-by-step -step, um, easy way to sign right up on your cell phone. Um, which is mostly the easiest way for parents. Um, so the app actually allows you to split the class up into groups. Um, this has been great, um, especially during this crazy year as things have looked different um, because I've been able to split my students up into cohorts. Um, so those small number bubbles um, at the top are the kids dojo points. So dojo points are used um, differently across teachers. Some teachers choose to reward dojo points to students individually um, for encouraged behaviors as a means of classroom management. I personally chose to reward my students as a group. Um, so this is another reason why I just love this group feature here. Um, Cause I can, instead of going in and giving each student a point for something in my classroom, I can go right in and give it to the whole group. Um, so here, are some of the things that a child might be rewarded for. Um, when I award a dojo points in my class, it's important that, I, that they know why they earn the point. Um, and the app really helps me make that clear to them when oral expression might not be enough or you know, when they go home and we say, oh, our class earned a dojo point, but I forget why. It's all right here on the app. Um, and the great part about this is that parents can actually check in on this while they're home. Um, so some of the things that the app encourages are helping others, staying on task, participating, persistence, teamwork, and working hard. And then at the bottom there, there's this um, feature where you can actually make your own skills. Um, so this has been nice for me, especially with this new remote learning. Um, so I can put on um, encouraged behaviors, you know, to use on Google Meet or when they are home doing remote learning. Um, so I have been lucky to have two of my first graders with me today um, to help us talk a little about this point system on Class Dojo. Um, I would first like to introduce Braitlin. So Braitlin, if you are there, 
Can you tell everybody your name and how old you are? Great, Lynn, are you with us, my friend? Well, we can, and we can move on. We can try Addie. So Addie, are you there? Could you say your name and how old you are? All right, go ahead. There you go. My name is Addie and I'm seven. Hello, Addie. So Addie, I had a question for you. So can you tell everybody some of the ways that we can earn dojo points in our classroom? So how we earn dojo points is we, when we earn dojo points, we, we get 100 dojo points and we, and when we get 100 dojo points, we get to have a dojo party. We get to have a dojo and, party. And Addie, do you know some of the ways in our classroom that we earn these points? What are some of the things? We earn, that we, earn we earn dojo points. Um, to, to help each other and be kind to each other. Exactly. Thank you, Addie. And Braitlin, I think I see you there now. Braitlin, could you say your name and how old you are for everybody? I am Braitlin and I'm seven years old. Thank you, Braitlin. And Braitlin, can you tell everybody some of the ways we earn dojo points in our room? How we earn dojo points in our room is um, we share, we be kind, we be respectful, we be responsible. That's a lot of ways, Braitlin. Nice remembering. And Braitlin, what happens when we have our dojo party? What do we get to do? We, we, get to vote, we get to vote on something. We get to vote on something. And Addie and Braitlin, can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Do you like when we get to have our dojo parties with our whole class? Yes, me too. Thank you, girls. All right, so I'm going to go back to my presentation here. And let's see. And one other thing I just wanted to add was um, the last piece was that Dojo has these really developmentally appropriate videos um, to explain some of the positive social emotional learning skills. Um, so these are actually videos that I will play at the beginning of the year and the kiddos really like them because they love the characters and the videos can be kind of silly and engaging. Um, so it's just a nice way to remind kids how we can earn these Dojo points together. Um, so how do I use this app to communicate? Um, I use the app through the feature called Class Story. Um, so it's really just a, a feed set, a, set up a lot like any social media account right now. Um, this is where I can post um, updates or pictures of the kids. And you can just scroll right down and anything that was posted in the past, um, parents can see. So it won't go away um, if they ever need to reference something that I have given to them. Um, so my favorite way to use class story is by sharing moments from our school day um, with families. So here is a post of one of the kiddos in my classroom. Um, and you can see at the bottom that I can write a little comment about what's going on. And here, we, this was a math activity that we did together. Um, it was sent out to all the parents so they can kind of see throughout the day what's happening. And um, that notification will pop right up on their phone um, so they can check in on their little first grader and just um, keep updated with what's happening in the classroom. Um, here is another one right here. Um, this is a little boy Jackson in my class. Um, we had a, a project on the story, The Mitten by Jan Brett. Um, and the kids were very, very excited um, about these cut paper animals they had made together. Um, so we took pictures of them and we put it up on Dojo. And um, that's where their families could see all the hard work they've done in school. Um, and the great part about this is that it allows you to upload um, up to 10 pictures. So if you see that little arrow on the right, 
Um, if I were to click that, you would see all eight pictures that I uploaded um, of the eight kids from my, from my cohort, which is amazing. Um, right here is just a post of an update that I had made on my class story. Um, so this was just an update I made at the beginning of the year about school supplies. And what's great is at the bottom, you can see that I can see how many parents have viewed it. So if I were to click on that, it will give me a list of parents who've seen it, um, which is nice for me because then I can reach back out um, and reinforce a message that someone may not have seen. Um, parents also have the ability to like it, just like you may on um, Instagram or Facebook. Um, so that's a fun, familiar feature for a lot of families. And my favorite here is that there is a translation option. Um, so kiddos whose families do not speak English, um, they can set up their Dojo account to their um, home language and it will translate it for them right here um, with no extra work needed. The app will do it itself. Um, so I really do love that. Um, another great thing is on my wall um, where I post my feed, parents, can, parents and students have access to comment. Um, so I approve the comments that come on my, onto my wall. Um, parents can write what they, what they need to say and other parents will sometimes add on to that. And what's great is if a parent did not want to make a public comment, Dojo has a message feature. Um, so this is set up very much like a um, text message. Um, and it's wonderful because it's quick, it's easy, it's right on their phone and it looks just like it would if you were um, to be texting me on an iPhone or an Android or a different kind of phone. Um, and it's private. So this is something that only myself and the parent that I'm communicating with can see. Um, very much like an email, which is nice, but it's all in one app. Um, so we're just using one app overall for all the communications. Um, so how are students submitting work to me on remote weeks? Um, this is through something called Portfolio. Um, so here is a picture of the teacher view of portfolio. Um, and what this really is, is it's a platform for my, where my students can store their on um, their remote work. So when they do work at home, all of it goes into this portfolio. Um, it's easily accessible for them and it's easily accessible for me. And the best part is it stays all together. Um, it's not through a bunch of different emails, different Google drives, it's right here in portfolio. Um, so on the left side, I can make something called activity folders. So as you can see, I've made um, here, I had ma making meeting, writing and math for Tuesday. Um, so if I were to click on the Tuesday writing, it opens it right up to me and this is what it would look like on the teacher view. So I can see that um, the five kids have submitted it here and it actually tells me who has not submitted yet. So by the end of the week, I have already a checklist put together of who has given me work and who has not given me work yet, um, which is wonderful. This is um, the student view. So if a student were to log in on their Chromebook or a tablet, it would look a lot like this. They have their little monster icon up top. Um, right in the middle, it will tell them to do. It's pretty straightforward. So they'll have the three things from me, the math, the making meeting, and the writing. All they have to do is press start and they have those options right up top, those five options of taking a picture, a video, um, they could draw me something, they could attach something that they've made on a document, or they could write in a journal. Um, so lots of ways to express what they're doing at home. Um, if they were to log on on their parents phone, for example, um, this is what it would look like. Again, very straightforward. It walks you right through how to submit something. Um, so here are some submissions from kiddos in my classroom from Addie and Braitlin. So here is um, a piece of work from Addie. Um, Addie had did a making meaning activity. She was able to upload it right here um, um, to her portfolio. And you can see at the bottom that there is a comment feature. So I can actually go in and I can comment on, on them. Um, and if I hadn't gotten gotten to it that day, I can at least go through and like all of them um, so that the student and the parents know that I've seen it for that day. Um, here is some writing from Braitlin. So Braitlin can just take a picture of her work right there when she's finished and it pops right up for me to see um, on my end. Same thing with math. Kids can easily put their math up there. Um, this is Addie's math work from last week. And of course, when kids are doing activities, um, if there's a math activity for the day and there's no written work to submit, um, I had said that they could actually have someone take a picture of them doing the activity. 
So this is a picture of Addie doing a math game um, that someone at home had helped her take a picture of so I could see that she had completed it. And I, um, kiddos also like to send me videos, which is a really great way to submit something on Class Dojo. Um, so right here, I have a video of Addie um, submitting some writing work to me. So let's see if I can play this. Okay, so in, in the book, Dad calls me man. He talked about he wanted new sneakers. So uh, I wrote about that I want unicorn sneakers. Now I'll read my sentence. My shoes I want to have unicorn. Corn and pink eyes. I love unicorns. So I made me wearing my unicorn shoes and I'm walking on the grass. And this is my checklist. So I'm just trying to see how to get out of this now. Um, ba -ba -ba. I lost my screen. So as you can see, um, it's really easy for kids mm -hmm. to, oh, did I lose this? So, okay, so, oh, so sorry, friends. I'm just trying to get out of this right here. Um, anyone has any suggestions? Oh no. Um, You're fine, Tori, we can see you. We can see You're you back. now. Can You're, you see We're back on gallery. Oh, can you see my screen though? That's what I'm just no. trying to back to. In, in the oh, bummer. Okay. Sorry. Do, do you have anything else you wanted to share on that? I was going to show one more video of Breitland, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> so I, I, we will just add your Breitland could probably solve this in a second for us. <laughs> <laughs> Very likely. Um, but that's okay. So we can actually just hear from both of them now because that was my next thing. So Breitlin, um, talking, we were just talking to a, about cla uh, class portfolio. I was curious if you could tell everyone when you are home, how do you submit your work to me? So how does it work after you do your work at home? My mom submits it by so taking so Breitlin, you take a picture when you're at home and your mom helps you? Yeah. Yes. And Breitlin, sometimes when you're doing videos, how do you do the videos? How does that work? Who helps you with that? My mom um, films it. Your mom films it. Very amazing. Thank you, Breitlin. And Addie, what kind of things do you submit to me when you are using Portfolio? So Addie, what kind of things from home are you sending to me that I get to see in my classroom? I, what I put into Dojo, I put in Dojo is math, writing, and making meeting. Yes. And Addie, you send me lots of videos of you reading your stories, um, which I love to get to see at home. Do you like being able to read your stories so that I can see them? Do you like reading your stories? Yeah. You do, awesome. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to thank so much my first grade friends, Addie and Breitland for being here to help me explain Dojo. Um, I just wanted to say as a first year teacher um, and as someone who is in this very different kind of school year, um, this app has really been amazing for me. It's been super accessible. Um, I've gotten really great feedback from my parents um, and it's just really nicely, it's a really nice fit into um, this year into the classroom with things being so difficult, um, being able to connect with families at home while they're doing work at home um, as I'm in school with the other kiddos. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to my friends. I apologize for my presentation not working at the end. I knew I wasn't gonna get away with this without one um, technology delay. Um, but thank you so much, Mrs. Sheehan. Thank you so much, everybody. And that is all I have for you.
Thank you, Mas. Um, now I'm messing up. <laughs> Thank you so much. And please don't say sorry for our technical difficulties. I'm having some of my own tonight as well. <laughs> um, we had my daughter is a seventh grader and we used class dojo a little bit when she was at MP and um, she thoroughly enjoyed picking her person and all of that. So the fact that you are using it as well as you are using it now, it really is an asset to you. Do we have anyone have any questions? Tony, may I, may I say something? Yes. Okay. I just want to um, state that one of our goals is always to align a curriculum across the district and also align our communication with parents. And Mrs. Chin has done a fabulous job presenting this to the other two schools. So they have adopted it. And so the whole district is now using Class JoJo. It's a wonderful tool. And it's teachers teaching teachers through our professional development, which is, a, is one thing that we've done well this year. So... Just want to thank Ms. Sheen for that. Thank you, Mrs. Sheen. Thank you, Mrs. For Lizzie. Um, I agree that it is, I have witnessed the teachers teaching teachers. And um, I do think that it's a wonderful thing that all three elementary schools are working together. Um, I wanted to thank too, Braitlin and Addie for coming on tonight and being brave to speak to us, even though we're all in Zoom here tonight. Anyone have any other questions or comments? Mrs. Sheen, did you have anything else to add? I just wanted to say thank you to Tori for doing such a nice job presenting that. And um, it really is just a game changer for us. It really is for communication back and forth all throughout the day for parents to be able to communicate with the teachers in real time. It's, a, it's amazing. I'd just like to say thank you, Tori. Great job. Great job um, to our first graders. But I think this this app um, also demonstrates how, how good our teachers are at making PowerPoints, um, which sounds like a silly thing, but they're not easy to make. And that was a great presentation, very smooth and uh, easy to follow and understand. And I know that that's an important communication tool for you between you and the students during this time. So thank you for sharing. I think it was a great example. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cron, and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Quick Anyone else? Yes, please. Go ahead, Mr. Sorry, um, first of all, excellent presentation. Um, if you're able to present like this on Zoom, I can imagine as a classroom teacher that you do a really great job uh, with our first graders. So great, excellent job. And this is without a doubt a um, challenging year. Um, you know, we'd much prefer our, I would much prefer to have our uh, first graders in person in front of you re in having in-person instruction, but obviously at this very moment we can't. Hopefully we can work towards that soon. Um, however, I, it, you know, with, with the software, personally on the software, it seems very familiar when looking at, looking at it, which I think is a really good thing. It reminds me a lot of um, certain social media sites, you know, with the likes and the comments and being able to easily post and navigate with pictures. So I can imagine for students and for parents, it's really familiar and easy to, and easy to use. Um, for the kids, it looks like a lot of fun to use with the um, icons and the um, and the um, what's the avatars that they get to choose from to be able to work from. And um, it's about make. It looks like it's about as good as a bad situation can get. It looks like we have a good software product there, and it looks like people are embracing it, both parents and students and staff. So great job. Um, but also, I, I need to also give big compliments where compliments are due. And Addie and Braitland, you guys, you know, pretty much stole the show tonight. Um, so really excellent job, girls. Um, keep up the good work. I'm sure your families are really proud of you. And I'm sure you guys have bright futures in Rockland schools. Keep it up. Thank you, Mr. Biggins. Anyone else before we move on? No, no one's chiming in. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on to old business fundraisers completed. We have the junior class class shirts for $100.50. We have the senior class class shirts for $535. We have the travel club boon supply mixed bags for $491.58. And we have class of 2023 with class shirts for $243.90. So good job to them for raising money. It's not easy this day, all that's going on. Um, we'll move on to 
a COVID update? Is that Jane or Dr. Cron? That's me. That's me. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so I'd just like to begin by showing the current numbers. Um, currently, positive staff, as you can see, uh, we have one on the district level. We have 16 positive students. Just want to point out that sometimes when you're looking at the number of positive staff or positive students, one thing that we're not pointing out is that, for example, two of these students at the high school are fully remote and never in our buildings. And these two students at Jefferson, for example, are fully remote. So I, it, it's difficult for someone who's looking at this to understand that, but I just want to point out that in uh, the spirit of full transparency, we are putting all numbers, all students, whether they're fully remote or not, into our case updates. I send essentially these first two columns in my daily, uh, if I need to send one, in my reports that I send out every time we have a positive case. So the public is seeing these two rows. What they're not seeing are the number of close contacts that we're dealing with. Um, I will point out this number probably jumps out at everyone. I will tell you that 17 of those students are, are um, I'm gonna say this wrong. Is it JV, Jane, can you jump in? Dr. Cron, it's JV basketball. Yeah, it's JV basketball. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, so it's JV basketball, 17 of the 23 are caused by one, you know, one um, quarantining situation. So again, the numbers, the numbers look can, can be a little scary, but when you understand the context, it's a little less scary. Um, but anyway, that's a little bit of an update on our current case situation. Um, I wanted to talk about duration of quarantine. This is something uh, that in Rockland, we are staying with um, 14 days from the last date of exposure for students and for staff. Um, this is consistent with the Rockland Board of Health and their approach to other town employees. So all town employees are following this 14 days of quarantine from the last date of exposure. Um, some have raised concerns regarding the duration, but we continue to be guided by data and safety. Um, we have added testing, which has helped a great deal. We do have evidence of people becoming symptomatic after day seven uh, or on the 10th day and even on the 14th day. So again, by quarantining for a full 14 days, we are doing our best to keep um, folks who are positive out of our buildings. Um, parents are have reported that some are not being forthcoming because of this policy. So again, they're saying, look, because you're quarantining for 14 days, people are less apt to be honest with you. Well, you know, we're all doing a whole lot of um, the honor system these days and it's really important that people are forthcoming because obviously we're doing all we can to keep our, our schools safe. Um, I will tell you there is no judgment. I wanna repeat that. There is no judgment on this end um, when someone gets COVID. Um, it is something that we're living with and I, and I want people to be honest. So please be forthcoming. Um, you're not being judged on this end. Um, testing. So through our partnership with the South Shore Hospital between January 4th and January 21st, we have tested so far 232 people. Of those 232 people, 19 were positive. So that's an 8.2% positivity rate, which is in line with uh, the state's current positivity rates. We have three Rockland Public School nurses and three helpers who have been trained by the South Shore Hospital to administer the tests. We are testing six days a week, sometimes two times per day. Each, each day we run our tests from the school um, to South Shore Hospital, who then sends them on to the lab. Testing, uh, we are testing immediately to try to reduce again that third cohort or the number of students who are out on quarantine. We wanna keep that number as low as possible. We are testing family members of staff and students who are identified as close contacts. So we're doing this again to keep as many people in school as possible. Um, I will tell you that it's been a game changer. It is definitely keeping people in school. 
Um, I have shared our contact at South Shore Hospital with a number of our South Shore colleagues who have since reached out and connected. Um, I know Abington has, has uh, in sense connected with South Shore Hospital and is now doing the testing as well. And I believe Hall is doing it as well. And I think some of our other, my other colleagues are also reaching out to get the system set up. So um, it's been really great. Um, in addition to contact tracing, when we call, we're providing some counseling tips to help reduce the spread among family members, um, where to place car seats, the importance of cracking a window, wearing a mask indoors during quarantine, just trying to give um, some guidance and some help to families who are quarantining um, as it's very challenging for them. The COVID vaccine, our nurses and our CNAs, sorry, I'm missing a, an apostrophe, have been vaccinated in conjunction with the first responders here in town. So we wanna thank the Rockland Fire Department, especially Chief Duffy and the Rockland Board of Health. Um, and it gives us great confidence that we're able to vaccinate our faculty and staff. It, it, well, we're not able to vaccinate our faculty and staff and general population, but we're looking forward to uh, knowing that we're, since we've done it with our nurses, we will most certainly will be able to do it with our teachers and staff. Our OTPT and speech and language pathologists are also eligible under phase one. So they're currently making arrangements to be vaccinated at one of the state's distribution sites. We are pursuing three avenues of vaccination for the district um, via the public health through South Shore Hospital and through aggressive lobbying at the state level to enable us to actually vaccinate ourselves. So, um, I'm, I'm asking and I want the committee to consider and possibly discuss, you know, the possibility if we were to be offered the ability to vaccinate our staff, I want the district to be as nimble as possible and be able to do whatever needs to be done um, to get our teachers vaccinated should, should vaccines become available up to and including possibly even closing school for a day should that be necessary. Um, Vaccinating our faculty and staff would be a game changer. Um, I'm not saying that the moment everyone is vaccinated that we can reopen our schools fully because that is not the case. Um, there, there are many things to be worked out. 18 years and below will not be vaccinated. So they will still be coming to school and carrying um, the virus. And we're gonna have, we have a lot of work to do, but it would certainly be a game changer and protect our faculty and our staff um, from this deadly virus. Alan, can I and interrupt? I'd like the district to be nimble enough um, to move. Absolutely. Well, it's just a question. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, it, I think what you're beginning to refer to is the news that on the 23rd that the governor advanced teachers into phase one, correct? No, I, not that I know of, no. That's been reported in the news. Um, so if that is indeed the case, and um, teachers are, um, actually I'm looking at the re news report right now on, uh, on WBZ, um, it was released on the 23rd, that the teachers will be advanced to phase one. And if I'm incorrect, I, the, the news report's incorrect. But that being said, if we have the ability to, at, the, at the schools to be a uh, vaccination site and teachers are moved to phase one and we are able to uh, vaccinate our educators, uh, I agree that is absolutely a game changer absolutely a game changer and we ought to shift gears very quickly as a district if that does indeed become available and i would 100 100 percent support um closing school for a day to be able to make that available to all staff and students um it is up to us as a school committee to make sure that we are here to make sure that kids are educated um, and we do need to make sure we protect our staff um, but if a vaccine becomes available and it is a choice and people are able to get the vaccine um, to me, we should very seriously consider um, aggressively moving toward getting our children back into schools. Excellent. That, that's all I have on it. I, I just think, um, I just wanted to, you know, we're, we're having daily conversations, again, with South Shore Hospital and, and with the town, and we're pursuing this vigorously. I'm, I'm, I was not aware of that news, Dan, that the governor had moved us up to phase one. Um, that's excellent news. Um, we did send a letter on Saturday, on Friday, um, on behalf of all of the districts in the South Shore League, 
to the to the governor asking that we vaccinate teachers as soon as possible. But most importantly, to point out that schools, in our opinion, are uniquely positioned to actually administer the vaccines. Yes. So we we have 500 employees and we have five um, very good sized buildings. We have five nurses and we have three CNAs. So we have the staff, we have the space, we have the infrastructure, we have the organization. So um, I'm really hoping um, that the pressure that the governor is receiving will, will have some effect and we will be able to get our hands on that vaccine as soon as possible. Me so too, absolutely. And, and other quick comment, Alan, I know that you have been on the forefront of uh, making that happen politically and really been a leader amongst um, your amongst our superintendents locally as far as making sure that vaccine is available uh, to teachers. Um, and if my information is correct on if it's not being not having happened already, then I apologize. But I thank you for your, um, you know, being a real leader on that. Um, teachers deserve to be vaccinated. Teachers deserve to have that opportunity. Um, you know, they're putting themselves on the front lines. They're seeing kids every day. They're coming into our buildings every day. Um, they deserve to be um, vaccinated right up front line with, with everybody else. Um, as a society, it's important for us to educate our kids, um, but it's also important for us to protect our educators. Um, and I'm glad to see you really stepping up to protect um, the staff at Rockland High School and uh, Rockland at Rogers Middle School and all three of our elementary schools. Um, those, those educators and staff deserve mm -hmm. that and our kids um, really deserve to get back into our schools. Yeah, thank you. And I, I would be remiss if I did not um, give credit where credit is due. I, I'm doing all the talking and writing letters, but Ms. Hackett, uh, who's in her basement right now, is um, very much responsible for our connection with South Shore Hospital and for our testing program. And she is, um, she has really been phenomenal throughout this. So thank you very much, Ms. Hackett. Thank you. It's a very good team. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add. No, we want to be the first school district vaccinated. That's our goal. The Commonwealth, that's my goal. That's our goal. I mean, we it, it would make a lot of sense. I mean, if if indeed teachers do get moved up or if they have been or if they do get moved up, it would make a whole lot of sense, I would think, for our district to be able to, as you suggested, maybe have that opportunity to just shut everything down for a day and give absolutely everybody the chance to get, come in and, um, and get themselves protected and have them be safe. Uh, you know, particularly we're doing the testing on site. Um, you know, Alan, I, th I saw you quoted in the news. You have the freezers, you got the facilities. Um, it's it. You have the you know the personnel to do it in the, in the appropriate ways. Um, it just seems to me to make a whole lot of sense. So that that's all I have on the COVID update. Just want to say that if um, anyone can do it, it's the team of um, Dr. Cron and Ms. Hackett. They can get it done. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. I wanted to add that when I spoke with Senator Keenan on Friday, he did tell me that Dr. Cron was the only one on the South Shore in this area that had um, really risen to the occasion to speak up to make sure that the teachers were um, vaccinated and that North Shore people have um, superintendents supporting them and speaking up on that side, but that Dr. Cron was the only one on this side of Boston um, to speak up. So kudos to you, Dr. Cron and Jane um, for standing up for our teachers. They certainly deserve it. Um, I wanted to also add that I think that it should be mentioned that this is a choice that yes, we would like them all vaccinated, but if there was a teacher or a faculty member that did not feel comfortable to be vaccinated, it's not something that we're mandating. It is definitely a choice. Um, does anyone else have any other comments before we move on? I'd, I'd just like to, if I could, Dr. Cron, I'd, I'd just like to thank the nurses, Kat, uh, Kat, um, Kathy Ryan, our head nurse, Floor Plang and Shaney McGarry, who's doing the weekend testing really the, the Sunday, the, the availability of the Sunday testing has just afforded so many students and staff the ability to be on, in school on Monday. Um, it, it's, it's really, we, we tested 27 people yesterday on Sunday and we had the results by wow. 10 o'clock and we had the results by 10 o'clock last night. And that's, 
you know, 17 of those people wouldn't have been in school today if they couldn't have been tested yesterday. So it's incredible. Would, it's been, Just one, one final thing. It we is did, incredible. So that's, we, we did survey the staff. Go ahead, Alan. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? We did, we did survey the staff um, if, to ask them if a vaccine were available, would you take it? And of the um, nearly 200 that responded, 93% thereabouts said they would in fact take the vaccine. So that's much higher than, for example, some nursing homes and hospitals, they've been having a lower rate of willingness to get the vaccine. Um, my indication from our faculty and staff is that they are very willing and interested in getting the vaccine. So I think that's worth reporting as well. And if, if I could, and this would be for the entire staff, not just teachers. Right. This Drivers, is everyone. The other thing, the, the other quick comment is, is, I mean, in a very unscientific way is kind of go around town and you talk to friends and families and people you know, it seems like this thing is just everywhere right now. I mean, a lot of people are sick with it. A lot of people are coming down positive with it. Um, but, you know, when you look at the numbers that we're reporting from the schools and uh, people that are getting into the schools and being transmissed in the schools, it's, it seems as though the schools are really doing a great job still of keeping people safe. Um, you know, the custodial, custodial, custodial staff keeping the place clean. Um, it seems as though that Rockland schools um, are still, as they always were, a safe place to be. Thank you, Mr. Biggins, I agree. My computer is definitely hesitating, so I feel like I'm being choppy and I don't wanna feel like if someone wants to talk, I almost feel like then talk. <laughs> um, um, all right, uh, this else? is Jamie. Um, I have just a quick question. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're, we're really pushing to get the teachers into phase one and, and we thank you, Dr. Cron and, and Jane. Um, and I know Dan, you shared that maybe that um, has been approved. Uh, so I guess we'll wait for that confirmation um, and continue those efforts with phase one ending in Feb or going through February. I was trying to look up the actual date when phase two starts, right? The, the teachers are part of phase two. Do we, would we have that plan laid out if we can't get them in as part of phase one? so that we are really ready when their anticipated phase two begins. So sort of having that secondary yeah. plan ready to go. So I don't know if you had any more information on what that procedure would look like. Um, and if you had a better date of, right now I looked at the mass COVID timeline, vaccination timeline, and it just said February, March. So I didn't know if you had more details to maybe give the public a little bit more information of, you know, more of that process um, that we're we're marching towards, unless we get pulled, unless the teachers and staff get pulled into phase one. So. so, I don't have anything more than I've reported tonight. I do know okay. that the state is meeting two times per week to discuss the rollout timeline of the vaccine. They're meeting twice a week, and they are considering all of the appeals that they're receiving from different groups, funeral directors being one. Um, again, dentists were recently moved up on the list, so they are making changes. So I'm very hopeful um, that in fact, what Mr. Biggins mentioned is true because I- oh, Actually, not to interrupt, it's not. I'm actually, I apologize. I absolutely was misinformed and misread. So it's. it looks like I'm hoping that it's gonna be happening very soon. and. Um, I don't know if anybody saw our superintendent on the news being interviewed about it and talking about it, but it's absolutely going to be of help from pressure of people like Alan and, and, and people in, uh, you know, they're, they're fighting to make this happen. Um, hopefully it looks like phase two kicks in February 1st. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hopefully that'll be about when the transition will take place. We can only pray, I suppose. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add? No takers. Okay. We'll move on to new business with the request of the approval of fundraisers. We have one for the class of 2022 selling masks through February into March. Um, that's the junior class. 
May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Um, all those in favor will have Mr. Biggins. Aye. <laughs> Mrs. Hennessy. Aye. And Mrs. Davidson. Yes. And I'm an aye, so that's the four of us. Thank you. We'll move to personnel information for December and January. Dr. Cron, do you have anything to add? I do. I just want to point out a few retirements. Um, Donna Capeless, I think I've mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again as it appears in this, this month's report. Um, Donna Capeless, our accounting accountant, really in the district. She's remarkable. She will be retiring um, in August. We are um, one of our van drivers, Joyce Hapoja, is, is retiring as well. Um, also, longtime physical education and director of about six other departments, Brenda Folsom, our physical education uh, department head, is uh, also announced her retirement as of July. Um, also, Jean, Jean Page, a reading teacher at the middle school, and Susan Lonergan, a science teacher at the middle school, are retiring, and I want to thank them for their service and thank them for all that they've done to make the Rockland Public Schools a special place to, to be. So that, that's all I have on personnel. Thank you. You took the words out of my mouth. I had that marked to do exactly what <laughs> you just did. Um, my children enjoyed having Mrs. Page thoroughly, so um, she will certainly be missed in the middle school, and I know I enjoy um, Mrs. Lonergan with all that she does for our students, but also for National Junior Honor Society. So we will be missing her as well. And of course, Donna in our office. <laughs> um, does anyone have anything to add to that? Has the search um, started for the principal role at the middle school? It's being posted in the morning. Funny. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Bond, I wanted to give Miss Bond, she had a obviously faculty meetings today and wanted to have some conversations with them, but that will be posted first thing in the morning. Okay, thank you. Beginning that search again. Very exciting. Okay. It's probably very exciting for her as well. Yeah. We'll move on to public service announcements. Mrs. Davidson, I'll start with you since you spoke just last. I have nothing to say tonight for once. <laughs> okay, short and sweet. Mrs. Hennessy. Um, I probably don't have much to say either. Just um, continue being safe in this crazy COVID time of ours. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Mr. Biggins. Well, just we're in the uh, doldrums of winter here. Um, you know, it's days are short. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're staying home, we're remote learning. Um, so far, it seems that everyone's doing a pretty good job staying positive and getting to work on time and getting to school on time and just keep it up. You know, if there is light at the end of the tunnel, um, don't, you won't believe it, but soon enough, June will be here. Keep up the good work, everybody, and be safe. Thank you. And I was just going to add that I turned in my nomination papers um, last week to run again for my second term on the school committee. Um, I have had the pleasure um, of sitting here for three years and I would like to continue that. Um, and that's all I had. I will keep it short and sweet. <laughs> Thank Emily? you. Emily. Jill, we wanna make sure Emily, does Emily have anything? Our student representative? Yes. Yes. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see her because I can't see. <laughs> sorry, Emily. I'm so sorry. Fine. Go ahead. Um, I just figured I'd like update about some things that are going to be happening in the high school um, upcoming in February. We just have like two or three events that are happening the beginning of February before break. Um, we're having World Cancer Day on February 4th and 10th for both cohort A and B separate, um, where each day, um, each grade is going to be wearing a different color to represent each different kind of cancer and kind of bring um, 
awareness to the different cancers in the world rather than just like how in October we do like breast cancer awareness. Um, this is kind of awaring a bunch of different in one. So we have freshman yellow for childhood cancer, sophomores white for lung cancer, juniors purple for pancreatic cancer, and seniors are orange for leukemia. So I think that's a really good um, thing to bring all like the different classes to have each do a different one. Um, also, since February is Black History Month, each day we're hoping to have a different person and quote over the announcements every single day to um, bring awareness to all the different people of color who have made an effect in our history. And also on February 12th, since we didn't get to have our pep rally in October in person, sadly, we're hoping to have a virtual pep rally. It's gonna be a live stream type format. We're still kind of working out the kinks, um, but it's gonna be on the day, I believe when cohort A is in person. So cohort B can kind of watch from home and still um, participate as well. We're still figuring out how we're gonna do that, but that's just some things that are coming up in the high school, so. Yeah. Very exciting. And thank you. I'm sorry I didn't include you and start off. I usually start off with you just so you know. So um, so I appreciate that. But that does all sound very exciting, even though we're not all in person. So good job to the high school and you for bringing us all that information. You were prepared, girl. <laughs> does anyone else have anything to add so I don't cut them off either or exclude them? Can I, Before we I go? one thing, um, I don't want to end on a down note, but um, the South Shore lost an incredible human being today, uh, Jack Ahern, the former superintendent of the Abington Public Schools, and uh, before that, the Weymouth Public Schools passed away, and um, he was my mentor for the first three years of my superintendency, and he worked very closely here in Rockland to develop our strategic plan. And uh, he was a great man and he will be missed. And uh, I just think it's worth mentioning here in this public forum. Thank you, Dr. Cron, and sorry for your loss in the towns. Sorry to end with such a depressing thing. <clears throat> no, I'm glad that you brought it up. I think that it was important for us to talk about. So thank you for that. Um, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Um, all those in favor? I have to roll call. Mr. Biggins? Aye. Mrs. Hennessy? Aye. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. And myself is a yes. That's four of us. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Thank you, everyone.